It is time for your co-main event of the evening for the Who's number one light heavyweight championship! In the blue corner, out of Houston, Texas, representing Gracie Baja, it's Pedro Mourinho! Here we see our current light heavyweight champ here at WNO, Pedro Mourinho making his way to the mat in his first title defense. Man, this is going to be one of the most exciting matches of the night. Kendall Rusing, welcome to the booth. How you doing tonight? Hello, let's rock and roll. What an entrance and to come in during this match in particular. I'm feeling stoked, super excited to be here, guys. Yeah, it's going to be a great one, and I'm excited that I get to commentate the last two with you two. Let's introduce the next competitor. And out of the red corner, the challenger, training out of Austin, Texas, representing New Wave Jiu-Jitsu, it's John Carlo Bodoni! What? All right, we got some Texas on Texas action right here with John Carlo Bodoni, the reigning ADCC champion. Absolutely, what a meteoric rise. John Carlo Bodoni had over the course of the last 12 months becoming an EDCC champ, one of the toughest divisions there was. Jake, this is going to be a phenomenal match. I am stoked for this one in the pre-show and the build-up. We knew this would be a clash of the titans. This is, there's two main events tonight, Chase, and this is one of them. I am stoked to watch this battle. All right, tail of the tape here for the light heavyweight title, which is on the line, 26 years old to 27 years old. A slight height advantage for Giancarlo Bodoni and both are top five in the entire world. You can see both athletes ready to Fight. go. And here we go. I really think the beginning of this match is a battle for top position. In the pre-show, we talked a lot about respecting Pedro Mourinho's guillotine and Mourinho team. And uh, I want to mention, though, that Giancarlo, not only does he have great wrestling, but he throws in a lot of judo uh, essence in there. He does a lot of foot sweeps and a lot of things that can keep you safe. There it is, from the guillotine while still fighting for top position. So I think that's the game plan here. Yeah, Pedro Mourinho, no stranger to the wrestling battle. You see uh, wrestling, a big improvement in the corner of New Wave. All their competitors have just done a great job improving in that area. Uh, one thing I see Giancarlo doing already is implementing a similar game plan that his teammate Gordon Ryan did against Pedro uh, on the Who's Number One stage is mm -hmm. a lot of snap downs, utilizing that height advantage. I think that's really the move with Pedro Mourinho. We saw that, like you said, with Gordon, and we're seeing it again with Giancarlo. You do not want to shoot underneath the chest of Pedro Mourinho. Now, it's important to mention, too, that it's not to say that we won't see things like blast doubles or things where the head does move into the chest, but in order to do that with someone like Pedro, you've got to get him standing all the way up. Oh, Ooh, Pedro big Mourinho foot with the foot sweep of his own. Look out on the edge of the mat, Pedro. Thankfully, pulling off the gas there. <laughs> My but what goodness. a look from Pedro Mourinho. Yeah, Worth yeah. mentioning, this is the first who's number one in a while we've had on a very big stage, so we don't want anyone being uh, toppling backwards yeah, to the was, ground. He was definitely redlining there. We were uh, The <laughs> RPMs were set to 11. <laughs> Mourinho has to be pleased, though, with a, a strong answer back to Giancarlo. Cool. Many thought that uh, the ADCC champ might have a significant advantage in most areas in this match, but Mourinho was unfazed by that. He says, you deserve that as the ADCC champ, but he has something to prove tonight. Absolutely. I mean, we are talking about the double gold IBJJF world champion beating a lot of ADCC veterans in that contest. So, Pedro Mourinho, no stranger to the same level that Giancarlo has been victorious against. And Kendall, to your point earlier, cool statistic about Pedro Mourinho is 51 wins at Black Belt. 28 have come by submission, and over half of those, or nearly half of those, come by guillotine. Wow. Yeah, I think it's really smart to see Giancarlo doing two things. One, he's going for the collar tie, but not in the way where people are trying to like drag the head down because Pedro has such good posture. But he kind of does like a, a 
how do you want to say it? Like pulling over and over and over on the back of the head. There's a better word for that. But it really messes with the posture pager. We saw it again there. And he also has a beautiful left hand underhook he keeps inserting, especially when you have a height advantage. If you can jack your partner up and get them in more of a straight up and down posture, Stop. everything else starts opening up, including the lower body, which is how we're seeing him connect these underhooks to these foot sweeps into some more um, of these multifaceted attacks. Yeah, something about the pulling on the head over and over also kind of discombobulates you. If you're if you're <laughs> in that position, you're getting pulled over and over. It's kind of shaking you up Those a little bit. Those are some big hands to be pulling you over. And over. Absolutely, you know, it, sh it shakes up your timing. That. It's kind of just like a clinch, right? Like the jack like a high clinch, yeah. but with one hand. The jackhammer. We're calling it the jackhammer. <laughs> I'll roll with that. What I like about these exchanges so far is that both are pushing the pace in their own way. One one reacts to one uh, attack and then fires back with a counter of their own. It's really not been one-sided thus far. Dueling foot sweeps all around. I agree, and we see some of this uh, arm drag action too from Pedro. So both athletes seem to be doing a great job of attacking both the upper and the lower body at the same time. And with people that not only are they really skilled on the feet as far as their wrestling attacks, and again, we see a nice little snatch single, but Giancarlo able to step it back down. Not only are they really great wrestlers, both of these guys, but <laughs> see a little bit of an exchange there, smile on yeah, Pedro. Pedro Marino knows, ah, oh, man, that was my fault. <laughs> Another arm drag into a single here. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Ooh, goodness gracious. That hurt me. <laughs> and again, and again, oh. a third time. But the base that Bedoni holds up, what balance. Those were not gentle taps. Hey. Not that I think that you know, fooled anyone. <laughs> that, those. That might be some color on that tomorrow, that's all I gotta say. Goes to show Ooh. even Muay Thai fighters can enjoy a who's number one. <laughs> wow, big underhook now from Pedro, a little bit of a switch in the action. But Giancarlo is comfortable in Wizards, we've seen him here a lot. And he needs to be careful because Pedro Marino also knows that a Uchimata is right behind that overhook. So cool. Yeah, it's absolutely true, Jake. And the, the frustrating thing though about the Uchis and Nogi is if you have no, if you don't have really strong control on the other arm, then as soon as you go to throw, you may really get some great hip elevation and your leg may go very high, but then the person's free hand on the other side posts and they kind of spin back to face you. It's a, and it's it's not unrisky, right? It's not all the way safe. So I saw Giancarlo kind of back out and now look for his underhook here instead. You know, Chase, one thing I've noticed about the new wave competitors is that they're willing to play the long game. What I mean by that is, notice that Giancarlo is maintaining a very tall posture and he's consistently going back to that head control. It's something that, mm. uh, once again, I'm gonna bring it up, Gordon Ryan did against Pedro. He spent a good six minutes just just gnawing at the head, just right. over and over, initiating Wearing the jackhammer, down. doing sometimes mixing it up between a soft collar tie and a hard collar tie. And that's tiring, that messes Judges with your cardio. Favor. Blue! Wow, Our I champion. was really, really wondering where the oh, judges were going to go. Oh, big double leg on the edge one. of the mat from Pedro Mourinho. He answers to confirm that judge's favor and says, yep, not only was I in favor, but uh, I'm here to stay. To your point, Jake, that you brought up there about discipline, I, I think that's a, uh, if there is a team that embodies that work ethic, it is New Wave. Very calculated, not just uh, how they approach jiu-jitsu in general, but every single match has a game plan. But I don't know if this is how they would have wanted to start this. Pedro Mourinho sort of uh, doing really well with the tempo and securing a couple, uh, or at least one big takedown and a few good looks. Yeah, and initiating a similar game plan in regards to defending the under the leg options of Bodoni that Jonathan Gracie did earlier, controlling the ankles a lot. Oh, looking for a pass to the side! Beautiful connection there. Beautiful example of connecting passes so smoothly. When you're going in one direction, you feel a leg come over, you have to switch quickly to the other side. Very textbook. Yeah, it's, it's also worth mentioning, this is important, Pedro Mourinho on this very stage passed the guard of Craig Jones. Mm -hmm. That is no small task. And he's getting good looks to the side over and over, maintaining creativity. He needs to be careful though, Giancarlo, Bedon Giancarlo Bedoni looking for the false reap. Look at Pedro grabbing even the toes. Mm. The false reap such a smart entry too because while of course he can look for finishes from there, it also just slows down that um, that really crazy train that is Pedro Mourinho because once Pedro starts pointing on the pressure and diving through, if you can just get someone like that to slow down for a moment and you can kind of reset the pace of the match, then you can really turn the tides. And it looks like we're seeing a little bit from that, uh, from, we're seeing a bit of that from Giancarlo. 
Little over eight minutes to go in here. The co-main event in the lead is Pedro Mourinho, as we saw earlier, cementing that after the judges said he had a slight lead. He increased that lead with that big blast double leg. You can see some really smart hand fighting here. Pedro is trying really hard to keep his right hand um, away from Giancarlo. He wants to go to a cross face or maybe an inside control of his own, but Giancarlo really insisting on a two-on-one wrist control on Pedro's right arm whenever he can get it. You know, one thing, Chase, although both of these athletes had wildly different experiences at ADCC, Pedro Mourinho, uh, I would say he struggled in the bracket, right? He just stylistically, the matchups did not agree with him. It was just purely a, a difficult showcase. Uh, Pedro still had wars in those opportunities. And on that day, it really is about who showed up. And right now we're seeing stylistically, Pedro is posing some difficulty for Giancarlo Badoni. Yeah, it's a very small margin that separates, uh, you know, the podium and, and the champion from uh, those who are just as worthy. And Pedro Mourinho, I think, as much as he was very casual and collected about how he approached tonight, I think he did come with something to prove. He is a WNO champ. He right. beat Craig Jones. And he also has a win a couple of years ago over Giancarlo Badoni mm -hmm. uh, very early in their black belt career. So I think he came in feeling pretty confident and, and mm -hmm. ready to put on that show. Yeah, that was a big elevation there from from Bardoni, oh, but wow, what an exchange. Yeah, that big elevation Pedro felt, and then instead of being elevated this next time, dove in on a head and an arm, but Bardoni used that elevation to release a little bit of the pressure, threatened to sweep. Pedro was forced to release and come back up on top. And I think that mid-level position that we're seeing now, that butterfly or the leg entanglements, is really where Baldoni wants to be because every time he's there, Pedro is forced to slow down just a little bit. When Pedro has the outside position or when he gets really tight chest to chest, that's where he does his best work. Pedro also showing he's willing to go for these, these flash submissions, mm -hmm. right? And he's always been known for that. He's always been known for if you put your hand on his shoulder, he's going to try to arm bar you. He's going to try to put his uh, ear to his shoulder and mm -hmm. crank on your elbow. Doesn't matter where you are, if your hand is extended, he's gonna snatch it. And right there, you show just the dangerous capability of Pedro Mourinho. Also has an underrated leg lock game, but I don't know if that's his strategy in tonight's matchup. Right. But Perhaps he has caught many, many opponents in the past uh, with a quick heel hook. Definitely comes on fast. So. Yeah, Roberto Jimenez being one of Multiple them. Someone he times. shared, yeah. you know, some some wars, wars with. Yeah. Although Giancarlo, I'm not sure if that's if that's the one, you know, <laughs> that, that might not be the one that I, I go straight to the leg entanglements with if I pay to Mourinho here. It'd make for a great headline, though. Absolutely. Yeah, notice here how Pedro has this, uh, his hips driving forward in this, like, squatted passing position. He never leaves his hips too far out. You can kind of see that even if he's not chest to chest, there's a lot of weight on the legs of Giancarlo. And then oh. as soon as he has the chance to explode, he's able to back out and move around. It's super impressive. You know, I think when heel hooks and all sorts of these different reap entries kind of entered the fray of the jiu-jitsu community through the nogi community, I think people were sort of scared of it. People were like, man, what am I going to do? How am I going to pass the guard? But Think of a match like Kynan Duarte versus Craig Jones in the finals of ADCC. It really shows that, man, this tight, stifling pressure, it really does, it makes it very difficult for the person on bottom. Absolutely, Jake. And I think we're going to hear a judge's uh, favor here in just a moment to see where the mindset is in the last five minutes of this match. Really interested to see if Pedro is still in the driver's seat here in the judge's mind. Look at that great control with Giancarlo. On either side, it seems he is consistently does a great job of controlling that far arm. Really, really impressive. It kind of keeps Pedro at bay. Even if Pedro throws his weight forward, he's not able to get that cross face or he's not really able to use that arm effectively. You know, Pedro being in the lead, it gives him full permission as a person in the lead to, I mean, he's in the driver's seat. He can go whatever speed he wants. Right. Yeah, a nice half butterfly reset here from Giancarlo. It was almost in a little bit of a smash pass position, but brought his right leg back inside. And oh. oh, we're seeing a little more activity out of Giancarlo Bodoni trying to spin under. Yeah, I think we're going to see a real sense of urgency creep into Bodoni's game here. He knows he's behind, even uh, if that may not be clear from the judge's favor. I think we missed due to technical difficulties, but I would say he has to think that's the case, and he'll try and make something happen here in our remaining minutes in this matchup. One thing we've seen tonight at Who's Number One, a consistent theme across Who's Number One shows is that it's never over till it's over. 
Giancarlo Bodoni still very much in this match. It really is a narrow margin separating the judges' favor. I mean, Pedro Mourinho has been on top for the whole time, got a big blast double earlier, but both athletes are remaining active. Yeah, I think it's fair to say Pedro's still in the lead, but I also, you know, these are this is pretty a close match. You know, there haven't been any huge submission attempts. There's not huge dominant uh, control just yet. So just a takedown and also maybe, you know, you could consider Pedro kind of running the pace of the match, I believe that's fair to say, is Stop. not enough to, you know, secure the win with two with 250 left on the clock, especially not with someone as excellent as Giancarlo. I do think Pedro has sort of taken a... Uh, his foot off the gas just a little bit here, knowing that he may be in the lead and may pour it on later in the matchup, but that could uh, invite an opening for Bodoni. Mm. And I don't know if a sweep is enough for Bodoni to, to rectify the lead here. I think he would have to establish another position like side control or the back and maintain it for some time. But the minutes are drawing near. So right. we'll, let's see who has the, the, the most gas left in the tank. And we see Giancarlo do a great job between consistently switching between attacking the head and attacking the legs, which forces Pedro to come back into this mid-level passing position rather than staying standing and kind of keeping a distance passing. So it's a really good strategy, but then we have, then we still meet the issue of Pedro being in this mid-level passing position. And right here in this, he has kind of the knee smashed together. He's consistently able to negate the power of Giancarlo's butterfly on the top side. Yeah, you know, they say in combat sports, you, you fight like the champion or you fight like the challenger. Right now, Pedro knows he's in the lead. And Chase, you might be right. He might be saving for ju that just in case, right? Yeah. Like he wants to have the energy just in case John Carlo says enough is enough right. and puts the gas on. Oh, there we go. Oh, and there we see. Now, this is a very interesting reset because I think Pedro's best bet was to stay in the top position. John Carlo had some good looks on the feet earlier. And while Pedro did take him down, Giancarlo had a few close calls from those foot sweeps. Look at Giancarlo giving the leg to Pedro Mourinho. You got to think he's got a plan Stop. for that. A little inside leg kick from uh, Giancarlo <laughs> Man, I'm on the edge of my seat over here. A minute 25 left. And a key, a key exchange here. If somebody gets a scramble and on the back, that could be it for either competitor. Wow. Oh, my goodness. The speed on that. <laughs> you know, this is dangerous for Pedro Mourinho. He needs to be careful in the wrestling exchange. But... On the other side, oh. he could also get another takedown and really cement the victory. So with one minute left. Oh, they're going close to the edge of the Stop. map. Yeah, this is a very Stop. tough position for Pedro, right? Because if he goes too crazy on the takedown and then off of some uh, so off of one of those exchanges on Carlos scores, that really evens things up and makes it difficult. Oh, oh big wow. sweep! And Pedro Mourinho! Pedro Mourinho with a Big foot sweep, silencing our chatter here right, in the commentary right. booth. Did he even have any grips? I think that was no grip. Just all feet? Just all timing. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> that was nuts. Work. Beautiful wow. work from Pedro, cementing what must be a strong lead. 30 seconds for Giancarlo Bodoni to find the Hail Mary submission. But I don't know if that's an option on that. Here. Yeah, if everything goes according to Pedro Mourinho's plan in the next 20 seconds, it looks like... Look at his control of the ankles. Like, you were mentioning that earlier in another match, Jake. When you have someone dangerous with the legs like that, he did a great job of controlling the ankles and shoving them down, not allowing Giancarlo to elevate his hips. Pedro looking fired up here. <laughs> oh, it's getting very chippy in our last, last seconds Stop. of the match. We have... Come to the end of this contest, and still, the who's number one light heavyweight champion knows, exercises the fanfare. He knows what he's done. Great showing from John Carlo Bodoni, the ADCC champion, sitting down with John Danaher, assessing how it all went down. Well, let's get a replay over some of the moments of this match, Chase. Talk me through this. Man. Yeah, things opened up with great looks from the rest on the feet from both competitors, but it was Pedro Mourinho that ended up finishing a takedown early. Here's that blast double coming up shortly, I believe, right on the edge of the mat. Also, we had uh, these very emphatic uh, attempts at the trip, but Mourinho had great timing, perfect technique. It was never really out of position, Jake. 
huge blast double. And you're totally right, Chase. He really spent a great deal of time showing his maturity as a Nogi competitor. I mean, he kept himself safe from every single one of the ADCC champion's attacks. And all credit to Giancarlo Bodoni. He was really trying to create openings. He was really trying to make everything happen. But Pedro Mourinho just looked like the champion for a reason. And this big foot sweep right at the end there really sealed the deal. One more angle at that right on his back. Yeah, and the match at that point still stood on a knife's edge, but Paige Marino sealed the deal. Let's take it to Gabriel Martins for the official decision. Your winner. And still, light heavyweight champion of who's number one, Pedro Mourinho! What a match. What a night, Jake. Puts a stamp on his reign here. Who's number one does Pedro Mourinho? And he's all smiles and he deserves it. Cannot believe the performance he just put in. That was amazing. Yeah, absolutely emphatic. You got to think that ADCC organizer Mo Jasm, who's in the audience, probably really liked that match. All credit to Giancarlo Bodoni. Very impressive, as always. Let's take it over to Kendall Rusing. All right, Pedro Mourinho with an amazing, amazing win here. Two big takedowns. Tell us what was going through your mind as the reigning champion coming into the match with such an accomplished opponent. Uh, you know, I know Giancarlo would be a tough, tough test. You know, he's just won the ACC. But on my mind, I think what's more motivating me was to see people, you know, call me out like as I was an easy match, you know. I think today I show I'm no easy match for nobody. I'm no Hold on, let me put this on you first. Here we go. Nice, looking good. <laughs> okay. And these days, you know, never call me out, you know. I'm somebody really, really tough on this game. I have been, you know, fighting the best a while already. It's no yesterday, it was no last year. I'm five years on this level, you know, since Purple Belt. So put some respect on my name, you know. I think there's a lot of respect here tonight for you, that's for sure. And as far as that goes, I mean, you're the champ now once again. What would you like to see in your future? Anyone in particular? I want to face Maria Gatti. You know, I just, I just get Bodoni. Now I want to fight Maria Gatti, right? From the way. That's great. Absolutely. I hope we can see it. Congratulations, champ. Speaking of putting respect on a name, this Tezos, who's number one, is brought to you by Tezos, the energy efficient blockchain and official partner of Flow Sports. Tezos is designed to evolve, built to empower. Visit Tezos.com to learn more. This show is also presented by Defense Soap, now the official soap and body wipe of Flow Grappling, protecting you for over 15 years. Defend what you have built. And now, Jake, before we move on to our main event of the evening, it is my pleasure to introduce the trailer to the third and final 